This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters First. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. So the hurricane is getting ready to make landfall and there are, you're, you've, you've onboarded with a bunch of IA firms and suddenly your phone starts to blow up with text messages and you start getting emails and you're even getting text messages and emails from companies that you've never heard of and that you didn't you know onboard with. Somehow they got your information, right? And they're saying, hey, uh, answer yes or no. Um, we are, are preparing for hurricane such and such, and we, we, you know, we're going to be deploying adjusters to the coast. And da, da, da. Do you want to go? Would you be interested in deploying? Yes or no? Be, or would you be interested in being put on standby? Yes or no? What do you do? What does that even mean, right? So we're gonna, let's talk about this, right? So to take a couple of steps back, right? Insurance companies, uh, they know that they have um, and, and again, as, as, as insurance companies, they're in the business of, of risk avoidance and, and the transfer of risk. So you're going to, as a homeowner, you, you're going to put, um, buy a subscription to an insurance company in the hopefully um, never happen event of the house, your house burns down because you don't have all the cash to rebuild the house just in your pocket or your bank account, right? Um, so you, you're going to say, all right, well, I'm going to pay... Um, a certain amount of money every year, and that will cover me. They, the insurance company promises to pay for my house if to rebuild it, either here or someplace else, if it burns down or it's, or something happens to it that's that by a covered loss. Right? Basics of insurance. Insurance, you know, insurance for dummies. Um, and I probably explained that like a dummy. Um, so when there's a, uh, in certain parts of the country where there are, are higher chances for natural catastrophes, for example, um, coastal Florida, coastal anywhere in the Gulf or in the Atlantic, where you have major tropical cyclones, we call them hurricanes, right? That will, can blow on shore, bringing a lot, bringing flooding on high winds and heavy rains and causing massive damage, like massive billions and billions and billions of dollars worth of damage, right? The insurance companies know people are going to live on the coasts, right, and live in those places because they're nice places most of the year. When it's not stormy, they're beautiful, right? And people want to live on the beach and watch the sunset and stick their toes in the sand and all that kind of stuff. And there's no way you're going to be able to stop people from doing that, right? The fact that some insurance companies have pulled out of coastal areas or pulled out of Florida because of hurricanes and things like that is totally aside. We're just using a generic example here. Um, they know how many people or how many houses, they call them PIF or policies in force. They know how many of those they have in a given area, right? So they're going to say, all right, well, that, the, all the data that's showing us that the track of that hurricane is going to hit, um, you know, right across uh, a heavily populated area of Louisiana where we have lots and lots of PIF policies in force, right? So we estimate based on this, and they just probably clack a couple of keyboard, you know, numbers on their on their computer machine, and it'll say there are, you know, 16,500 um, policies in force in that area. And uh, so there's a probability, right, that X percentage of those will have some degree of damage caused by this storm, right? So they're going to try to figure out, they're going to sort of like reverse engineer how they can get an adjuster on site within the first week of that um or within the first few days or the first week or two, um, at least being contacted immediately, have an adjuster at that house, right, to, to start doing something, right? And so they're going to figure out, all right, well, so we got that many houses, we got this percentage of places damaged, we're going to need 500 adjusters, right? I'm just picking a number out of the air. This is not real numbers, right? So they need 500 adjusters, right? They may do this, have this conversation and run these calculations some other time of the year, it's not hurricane season, nothing's going on, it's sunny or it's cold or it's it's not, there's nothing's happening, right? And so they will say, all right, well, if there is a big hurricane, we need to have uh, the availability to, to grab 500 adjusters and put them down there immediately, right? So they go to their IA firm partners and say, hey, um, how many Louisiana licensed adjusters do you have? Or how many New York licensed adjusters do you have, et cetera, et cetera, right? And the IA firm will go, oh, well, we have this many and that many, right? And <clears throat> so this is where this, the standby calculation starts to come into play, right? So the IA firms are gonna want you to have every possible license that you can get your hands on. 
and in particular, coastal, you know, Atlantic Gulf, right, up to New York and then Minnesota. Um, so when a big hurricane is coming, the carrier is going to make a call to the to the eye firm and say, hey, listen, hurricane's coming. We need 500 adjusters. Can you can you fill 500? Can you give us 500 people, right? And if not, we'll have to go to another IA firm or other IA firms, which they often do. And many, most of the big carriers have relationships with multiple IA firms, right? So you may be, you may go on a storm where you see adjuster, you know, you're working for Pilot and somebody else is working for Crawford, but you're both working for State Farm, right? Um, so the, the IA firm says, oh yeah, yeah, no problem, we'll, we'll see what we can do. And then they have a panic and freak out and they have a bunch of meetings and everybody's hair is on fire and everything. And then they put the bat signal out to everybody that's on their roster who they'll start with everybody who's got a Louisiana license, right? And then if, if that doesn't fit the bill, if they can't get enough people to say yes on standby, then they will start asking for anybody and you know, let's get you an emergency license or can you get your license immediately or whatever, right? So that's what standby is, right? Is, is they're saying, we think that this storm is gonna hit um, this area and we need this many adjusters. And so the IA firm is getting a gauge of how many people they think they can mobilize. And I don't know the, the real behind the scenes math on this, but I suspect that if it were me and I was running an IA firm, I'd be like, all right, well, I could get, if I can get a thousand people to say yes to standby, I'll probably, able to, probably be able to get 60, 70% of those maybe? I'm just throwing a guess out there. If you if you run an IA firm and there's a different number than that, maybe comment, um, maybe 40% of those. I don't know what the conversion is. I don't know what the what that is, but it's gonna be less than 100%. So they're not gonna be able to get a thousand people. They're gonna try, so they're gonna call as many people as they can so that they can make sure that that, that you know, the rate at which everybody who said yes that what or the percentage of people who said yes who actually are going to go, they can get those people right. So that's kind of like a fifty thousand foot overview of sort of like what standby looks like before you get the text, right? So everybody's freaking out. It's a big panic. It's all hands on deck. It's you know they're sending out a mess messages to everybody in the hopes that you know at least. The, the number that they need, that they that they that the carrier wants them to send, at least that many people will actually show up on the storm site, right? So what do you do when you get the call, you get a standby thing, and then another one pings up, and then another one, you get like eight of them, right, or 12 or whatever. And this is where I may get in trouble with the IA firms, but I think that this is one of those like realities that they can't really do anything about. I'm gonna tell you to say yes to all of them. Okay, and because any one of those, and this is the simple, this is an absolutely, it's dead simple calculation that, that is perfectly reasonable to make and no one can fault you for doing it, right? Any one of those could be, could pop up and be like, all right, we actually have claims for you, head to Baton Rouge or head to, you know, New Orleans or whatever, right? Go to the, go to the coast, right? This, the, what I will tell you to do is to say yes to all of them. And if there's any of those that you haven't onboarded with, I might go to their website and just kind of, and start filling out applications or whatever, just to make sure I don't have to do that later. Cause I don't want, I don't want to have to do that before I get claims, right? Um, and then the first one that calls, I'm going with them. I don't care who it is. Is a new, is a brand new adjuster? One of these says, hey, we had you down for standby. You st do you still want to go? I say yes, totally. And the reason why is because that may be the only one that, frankly, that calls, right? And not because the other ones don't want you, but it may be that they ran out of claims, right? Hurricane Ian was a little bit infamous for being spectacular, right? On in videos and like the storm surge and Fort Myers and all that kind of stuff was absolutely insane. But it missed the super duper densely populated area that they thought it was gonna hit, right? Hurricane Florence, was it Florence? It was one of those, right? Where they sent a whole bunch of people down, right? And then um, it turned it to kind of be, not really a nothing burger, but like there weren't as many claims as they thought there were gonna be. And so they, everybody stopped deploying, right? So if you, if if a company like puts you on standby and you're like, and then they called, but you had this other one over here, they're like, I really wanna work for these guys because I know they pay more, they get a better fee schedule or whatever, like we just talked about. Um, and they didn't call you, but this guy did, and he turned them down. And then this guy's like, well, we don't have, there's nothing else for anybody to do. We got everybody we need, and they never call, 
right? Then you're, you're, then you're sitting at home doing nothing. You're, you're SOL, right? And you got to wait for the next one. So you get standby request, right? Text message, most likely. Some com- companies may call. Um, very time consuming. They can send out a mass text to everybody and their mom instantly at one time. Calling takes hours and hours and hours, and you got to have a bunch of people to do it. Um, but probably would be a better way, honestly, of you know making a connection with somebody and engaging whether or not they're going to be able to go or not. Whole other ball of wax, right? You get text messages. Everybody wants to put you on standby. You say yes to all of them, right? And it's probably not going to be twelve. There may be like three to six or eight, maybe. Right, say yes to all those, and then the first one that calls you back, or that sends you a message saying, "Okay, we have claims," you know, or that, or we want to send you down there to orientation to stage you on this. Then you say yes to that one, and you do not say yes. To, another one calls you, "Sorry, I can't. There's, I'm, I'm not available now." Right. So then the question becomes, well, what do you do um, with the other ones? Right. Well. You could be, I don't know if their systems would support it, but if they put you on standby and you said yes, then maybe you go back into your text message and say, um, not available, not available, not available to all the ones that that uh, you, you're not gonna take, right? Because you can only do one. You can only do one at a time. Please don't try to say yes to everybody and then try to like take all the claims and be greedy about it because it'll be a fail. Because they'll send you over here for this one and they'll send you 600 miles away for the other one and you can't do that. Okay, and you, even if you were in the same town, one hurricane deployment is a full-time job, a more than full-time job. It's 16 plus hours a day for one person to do. And if you try to say do that, two of that, there's there's not 32 hours in a day. Okay, it just isn't. Can't do it. So don't do that, right? If you get a call from somebody, for, you know, you've already said yes to these guys, and you're packing your bag, and you're getting ready to jump in the truck and drive away, and you get a call from somebody, and they say. Um, Hey, you said yes for standby. Do you still want to go to the storm? And you'd be like, Ah, listen, I'm really sorry. I'm not available for that storm. I I, I apologize, uh, but I won't be able to go. Right? That's it. Don't make excuses. Don't say, Oh, well, I'm going with Pilot or I'm going with Ebrol. Just say, I'm sorry, I'm not available. Thank you. Um, I, I thank you for your consideration. I hope that you'll think of me for future events. Um, but I can't go. Right? You don't have to tell them why because that person is probably making a gazillion phone calls, right? And they don't want to sit there and listen to your big excuse about it because they're not going to remember it anyway, right? And they're not going to be typing it into the computer going, oh, well, he couldn't go because he actually went with somebody else. And I may not even want them to know that anyway, right? I'm just going to say, nope, thank you for your consideration. I'm sorry, I, I, it turns out that I'm not available. I, I'm not available, right? Because you're not, right? It doesn't matter the reason. So don't give a bunch of reasons. Don't waste the other the person who's calling you. Don't waste their time by giving them a bunch of reasons. Just say, no, I'm sorry, I can't go. Take me off standby. Okay, have a great storm. See you, you know, bye. Hope you get good luck. See ya. Many wishes. Take care of yourself. See ya. Adios, right? Um, don't waste that person's time. You don't, it's not, this isn't the time to give excuses and rationales and reasons why you went with somebody else and why you can't go or whatever. Just say, no, I'm not available, okay? Um, You could, if you were super duper conscientious, you could call the other four or five firms that, especially if they're ones that, you know, you had a, a, you went to a bunch of their trainings and you talked to their managers or whatever, you might call them back and say, hey, listen, you know, you guys put me on standby via text. I said yes, but it turns out I can't go with you or I can't go, right? Call them. Even if you leave a message on, you know, HR's voicemail or whatever, and then that way they can not waste time wondering or figuring out if you're going to be able to go or not, right? You just take, you just get taken off the list. That would be a nice thing to do. I don't know that it would take very, take very long. Um, not necessary, certainly, but it would be probably a very nice gesture. And it may be that somebody, a human being, listens to that voicemail and they go, "Oh, that's a very nice thing. That person's very conscientious. Maybe I'll make a note in their file and say this person called us back and." Um, you know, took themselves off standby just as a gesture of, you know, to, to help us out so that we weren't going to wonder about them, whatever it is, right? So that's pretty much in a nutshell how standby works. Um, it's not, it's a big deal. You get put on standby, but a lot of the time they're just throwing, casting a very, very, very wide net and you need to say yes to all those because then that pings them all and says, all right, well, you, now you're saying that you're available and then you're going to go with the first one that pops up. Right. Don't wait for the third one because you're the second one. Or you're, which, don't wait for a different one because you don't 
Maybe you're like, eh, I don't know if I want to work for them or not. If you don't like them and you don't want to work for them, for them then don't say yes to standby for them. Go with, say standby to everybody else. But, but go with the first one that calls you. If you're new, right? Again, this goes back to like, can you negotiate fee schedules and all that kind of stuff as a new person? You absolutely cannot. You could try, and maybe there's, I'm sure there's exceptions out there of somebody who's great at you know negotiating, but don't, just go, right? You're, you're, the, the whole point is for you, is especially as a new person, is to get experience. And once you get experience, then you can start writing your own ticket, you can start picking it, being a little bit more picky, right? But right now, it's let's just get out there, right? I don't care if they pay W-2 and you only wanna work 1099, doesn't matter, go with the W-2 one, right? If it's they want to pay you hourly, or they want to pay you daily, or they want to pay you T&E, or they want to do this or that, and you don't know what those are, or you don't want to do any of those, it doesn't matter. Whichever one pops up, you go do that one. I don't care if it's your least favorite possible one, go. Because you're not there to like make a million dollars, right, or get rich, or whatever. You're there to learn and to get experience so that, so that you can start building a foundation for your career. And that's the whole point. When you go in your first storm, it's gonna kick your butt all over the place, no matter what. Um, and it doesn't really matter as long as you make it through and you you make it through with your head above water, right? And you and you're, you can demonstrate to the I firm and the carrier that, you have, that you're adaptable and that you're a resource that they can develop, right? Because you may get to the end of the storm and close all your claims, but do a terrible job, and they're like, man, that person, we're not gonna hire them again. You know, unofficially, we're just, they'll be the last person that we, ha- we call if, and only if we have to, right? Whereas if you're trainable and you're not complaining, you do everything with a smile and you're friendly, um, and you know, you may be like experience and you may like some certain skills, they're gonna be cool with that as long as they know that you've got your hearts in it and you're willing to put your shoulder into it as well, right? So standby, it's pretty cool when it happens and this is July, so probably in about four weeks, I would say, this is my prediction, you know, it's the weather so anything can happen obviously, but give it about four weeks from the middle of July and I think that uh, if there's gonna be anything, it's gonna start kicking up, kicking up then. So mid, mid, mid-August mid through the peak of hurricane season, which is middle of September, and then into the middle of October, it's still pretty active, and then it drops off after that pretty pretty well. So now is the time. My recommendation is to onboard with as many I firms as you possibly can. Get that done now. I don't care if you don't, if you have zero licenses, you have zero certifications, you have zero training, zero Xactimate, zero anything, doesn't matter. Apply and get on these rosters so that later, and then, and then go get your licenses and get your exact demand and get your certifications and all that stuff and then over the next you know, two, four, six weeks, whatever it is, two months. And so then that way when they call, first of all, they've got your number, right? So that you're on their radar. And then when they call, they're not like, oh, well, and by the way, you gotta do fingerprints, you gotta go do a drug screen, you gotta do a this, you gotta do a that. And then by the way, we need a copy of your birth certificate and we need a pint of blood and we need you know, a hair sample and we need you know, one of your fingers, right? You've already done all that stuff. So all they're gonna say now is, here's your claims, go work, right? Instead of, you have to onboard now. So do that stuff now. It's probably the biggest piece of advice I can give to you. Did you know that this is just a clip of a much longer video? To watch the whole show and for a chance to have your questions answered by me, become a member at AdjusterTVPlus.com.